Armored Warfare is a new game from Obsidian, which is a strategic, modern, tactical shooter. It's an armored uh, tank game from Obsidian. You know, one thing that's exciting for us uh, is the setting. Um, you know, when we get to make some, this is a challenge for us, like, like we're very excited about this challenge, and one of the things that's, that's neat when you get to make different games is, is adding something new. And uh, we believe that a modern setting uh, is, is new to the genre that's, that we can really uh, contribute to, and that's, that's a really exciting point for us. So there'll be a wide variety of countries represented in the game, um, but really in the modern world it's less about the specific countries the vehicle's from and more about the types of vehicles themselves. And uh, so we'll be focusing on vehicles from everywhere in the world. So we've been experimenting with some different sizes. The first map that we made uh, is the smallest one that we've tried so far, and that one is a, a thousand meters by thousand meters. And uh, as we started to experiment on that map and evaluate the speed at which modern vehicles move around and the view ranges that we wanted and the, and the accuracy that the vehicles have, it didn't. It felt a little too small. The next size up map that we've been experimenting with is uh, 1,200 meters by 1,200 meters which doesn't seem like a big jump in size, but it's actually a 44% increase in the total surface area of the map from the thousand by thousand side. And so when we started playing on those maps, it felt a lot better. It felt like there were places players could go that weren't just sitting out in the open. They could hide, they could sneak around. Um, we weren't just forcing everyone into a corridor to fight each other. Uh, now players actually had choices about where they went on the map and how they deployed at the start of the round. And so right now, that, that's a pretty good size for our maps. Uh, we definitely intend to continue experimenting with, with larger and larger maps. But our initial roundup of maps will range from the 1,000 by 1,000 map that we made first and the 1,200 by 1,200 uh, meter maps that we've been experimenting with since then. By default, we're pretty much making all the projectiles move at their real world speed. So you have slower ammunition like heat projectiles, which, uh, which kind of vary in the three digits, uh, you know, 700 meters per second to 1,100 meters per second. But you also have stable rounds, which are really fast. Um, those can go all the way up to 2,000 meters per second and faster. And in the game, they'll be moving at those speeds. One of the great things about CryEngine that we're using for Armored Warfare is that it's very good at rendering different types of weather. Um, and so we've put a lot of work into taking advantage of that power in the engine. So that includes snowstorms, dust storms, rainstorms, thunder, uh, lightning, and uh, having all that be reflected in the environment. Uh, it even has the power to change the weather over the course of the map. So maybe the match will start off with weather in one state, and by the end of the match, the, ma the weather is in a completely different state. Um, you know, it could go from uh, slightly overcast to a lightning storm, for example, over the course of a match. So this weather will then feed back into the gameplay, uh, factoring into to, uh, to vision systems and things like that that the players will be able to take advantage of. There are spotting mechanics in the game that affect whether or not uh, enemy vehicles can see each other. So you will not know where all the enemy team is at all times. If they're, if they're in cover, if they're hidden behind objects, uh, you won't know where they're at. They're not, they're not completely visible 100% of the time. And uh, this is one of those things where players will be able to configure their vehicles depending on if they want to emphasize being hidden more, uh, being more camouflaged. They can invest in things like camo, uh, camo nets, uh, which will be vis visible in the game and uh, rendered on the tanks. Uh, other players may be more interested in investing in spotting, extending their view range, extending their ability to detect other tanks. And uh, that's a system that we'll probably discuss in more detail at a later date, but there is definitely a spotting system uh, that players can take advantage of. Destruction of vehicles is obviously a core part of the presentation of the game. This is something that's going to be happening, happening in every match. Um, so this is another thing where we looked at a lot of reference videos where possible. We consulted a lot of, of people who have actually have experience in these things and talked to them about what does it look like, what does it feel like, what does it sound like, and try to convey that in the game as well. Uh, one of the things that's important to note is that there isn't just one type of way that the vehicles can be destroyed. They might be disabled from taking damage to certain areas of the vehicle, or it's possible that the vehicle is set on fire and, and burns out. Or the worst thing that happens, of course, is an ammo cook-off, which is a catastrophic explosion, 
uh, that can send the turret flying up in the sky um, and is going to create a massive explosion. These different varieties of ways the vehicles can be destroyed will be represented in the game. You'll see parts of the tanks break off as they take damage. Um, a lot of the looser objects that you see on the outside of a tank, like, uh, like bags and storage walkers and things like that, can be blown up and destroyed um, by the shells that, of, of an enemy tank shooting at it. So you'll be able to see that type of destruction as well. Even though the tank itself hasn't been destroyed, the components on the exterior of it can be.